G'day frothers, 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 how are you going? Today, very excited for this one because this is actually one of the videos that I uh, started this whole YouTube caper for. Finally getting around to it, I'm doing brushed versus brushless. Let's go. So today I've got two 12 volt Makita rotary hammers. Uh, they are the HR140 and the HR166. So <clears throat> I've chosen these ones um, because they're the most comparable tool that I could find. A lot of companies don't really do the whole brushed and brushless version of the same tool anymore. Uh, plus I already had this one, the brushless one. I've had this one for about a year and a half. Um, so I'm a rock climber. I like a really, really light rotary hammer and believe it or not, this guy does rock great. So this is my main tool for doing that. And this one, I basically just got for these videos so we can see uh, you know, how they compare. Consider chipping in. So outwardly, they're very, very similar looking tools. Uh, the brushless one does say BL on it, which is great. I've also got the little clip on there. Um, other than that, there's kind of just some really cosmetic differences. I mean, a little bit more rubber on here. The vents are in kind of different places. Uh, this one's got another vent on the top. Um, this one's a little bit bigger in the chin, I suppose. Yeah. So very, very similar tools. Uh, but um, what's going on in the in inside is, uh, well, I'm, I'm gonna get into that later on. Uh, I will crack these open and show you what actually happens on the inside, how they're different there. So suffice to say, let's just say that the brushless is like uh, a more modern digital kind of tool and the brushed is an analog one. You know, think about it like a uh, cassette tape versus CD. Uh, if, if you're actually old enough to remember what, uh, well, either of those things are, I suppose. A CD is this circle. Uh, I've also got uh, little drill drivers here. So this is a little bit more typical. The rotary hammer is very hard to tell apart, but this is a bit more typical. You can see that although these are both the same kind of 12 volt drill drivers, uh, they weigh virtually the exact same, even though this one has an extra, um, an extra ring in there. So if we line up those chucks nicely, you can see that the brushed version is substantially longer. Um, <clears throat> so it's a little bit more obvious in, in other tools. Uh, so the main, the main differences between these tools are the capacity. So the brushed is rated to 14 millimeters and I'm not sure what that is in inches, so I'll have to look it up, uh, put it on the screen there. And uh, so 14 millimeters and this one's 16 millimeters. So the brushless tool is gonna have either a little bit more impact, a little bit more torque, a little bit more power, something like that. So it can handle a bigger bit, so Makita says. We are gonna find out exactly how they differ uh, in a second. So if we take a look at the stats, the brushless is meant to have 1.1 joules of impact force. The brushed is meant to have one joule. So that's about a 10% difference. Otherwise, the RPM for this one is 850 versus 680, the stated RPM. And the impact per minute is 4900 versus 4800. So very, very similar tools uh, performance wise, but you do expect this one to do a little bit better because it's got a higher impact force. Okay, let's just check the weight. So 1700 grams, 1 1.7 kilos for the brushed. And the brushless is 1670. A little bit lighter for the brushless, so that's nice. And let's check the revs. So about 810, just a little bit shy of the 850 that they've stated, but uh, you know, that'll happen. And for the brushless. Six seventy four, so just a touch shy of the six eighty that they claim. So yeah, not too bad. So because the brushless motor is meant to be more efficient, it should have more runtime. So the first head-to-head uh, -head test we're going to do is actually just motor runtime. So I've stuck a little two amp hour battery in there and uh, just let them run on the bench and film them. Uh, so let's see how long they last.
Okay, so that was interesting. Um, the brushless actually switched off a couple of times in there for whatever reason. Maybe they got some automatic shut off. But uh, regardless, I had the clock there, so I was just able to count up the, 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 the run time. And the brushless ran for 17 minutes 21 compared to the brush tool, which is 14 minutes 41. So all up, that's, uh, yeah, interesting. It's only about 15% more runtime for the brushless. Um, I would have expected more, you know, some, some brands advertise up to, you know, 30, 40% more runtime, but really depends on what they're trying to go for for the tool. So the next test is a standard test I do with all my drills. And so that is the releasing torque. So we drive a big screw into a stump measure the torque it takes to release the, the, the screw, and uh, that's the measure we use. So let's take a look. All right, good stuff. So the brushed tool had an average releasing torque of 11.6 Newton meters versus uh, 14.93 for the brushless. So that's about a 22% difference. So yeah, not too bad. Fair bit more torque going on in the on the brushless tool. And uh, the next the next test is one I'm doing with all my compact rotary hammers or subcompact. You know these little tiny ones. Uh, so we're just gonna gonna do a speed drill, but with the bigger ones, we do a 14 millimeter. It's not really realistic for these guys. So I do an eight millimeter and uh, driving that in 80 millimeters and just doing a head to head, see how fast they go. Let's check it out. Yeah, okay, so interesting. There's not that much difference in there. So we got uh, 11.6 seconds for the brushed and 11.33 for the brushless. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I would have expected, because this guy has about 10% more impact force, supposedly, would have expected it to go about 10% faster, but yeah, maybe, maybe it doesn't make such a difference with the little drill bit. Uh, one thing I did notice in doing these tests, though, was the brushed really did seem to... Um, lose speed if you were drilling a bit deeper in. So yeah, you can really feel a difference in torque, like she would wind down a little bit more, uh, and this one just wouldn't, wouldn't really slow down at all. All right, so the next test is a standard test I'm doing with all the rotary hammers, so we can compare these little guys to the bigger ones we've already done. Uh, go check out those videos if you're, if you're keen. So this is 14 millimeter bit, Chomping in about 100 millimeters, so it's about four inches, I think. And uh, yeah, just going for gold, going for speed. Let's see how they go. All right, well that's uh, yeah, pretty impressive from these little guys, especially the brush, because this one's only rated to 14 millimeters and it still got through that in 13.13 uh, seconds on average. Um, so yeah, pretty good. Obviously a fair bit slower than the bigger boys, but uh, <laughs> not too bad. Pretty impressed with that little thing. And yeah, again, you know, the deeper you get with this, you do see, sort of feel it struggling a little bit, so it would kind of slow down, but you know, that, that would also have to do with the drill bit too. Uh, all right, and the other one was 12.43 seconds averaged over a few runs, so yeah, not too bad. All right, so now we're getting into the real business. Now, uh, I mentioned once or twice that I am a rock climber, so I use these things for rock. And uh, when you lug one of these up a mountain, 
you really got to make sure that you're going to get the job done. So you can bring a few extra batteries, obviously, but weight is really important when you're hanging off ropes, you're you know hauling it up, you're you're jugging up with Jumars, whatever. So um, it's really important for me anyway, and you know any other rock climbers, that, or rock climb developers out there. Uh, how much runtime do you get in the real world? So you know what can it do in uh, in this case, granite. So I got some granite. Uh, this is a, a standard test I'm going to do with all my drills as well. See how many holes you can get in granite. So I am using uh, these 10 millimeter four cutter bits because these ones are a bit more durable than the Makita's. And uh, they're from uh, De, De Trois, a French outfit, I guess. And um, yeah, these ones, these ones seem to work really well for rock. Uh, so that's why I'm using them. So we're doing 10 millimeter holes, 60 millimeters deep. Uh, the reason being is this is a pretty typical size for a safety bolt in rock climbing. And granite's a pretty standard kind of material. It's also hard as well as, as far as rocks go. So it's a good challenge for these little guys. So let's see how many holes we can get. So uh, the 14 millimeter, that's the brush tool. Uh, it did, did really well, so we ended up with uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And just check a few of them for depth. They should be... Okay, didn't quite make the last one. They should all be around... Should all be around 60. So the last one didn't quite make the depth, but, you know, I'll count that. Uh, 65, 65, 65, yeah, so they're all good. 60 millimeter, uh, got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So yeah, wow, really good. And again, that's, that's actually full depth, that last one. Yeah. So very impressive stuff. Uh, 15 just about for the brush tool and for the brushless a whopping 21. Oh man, I can barely believe it. So this is really uh, the, 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 the important measure that I'm going for. So, you know, we had maybe 10% better here, 15% better there in the other test. But when you add all those little improvements up, you end up with 30% uh, more work done per battery. And that's a, a, a nice way uh, to think about it. So with a with any tool you could go uh, you, you could go for power, you could go for longevity, you could go for runtime, you could go for torque. But in this case they've really just improved each one of those factors a bit and it's added up to a 30% bigger uh, amount of work done. Which is um yeah I pretty good guys. So Nicely done for the Makita. So I think we've had some really good results come out of this. Uh, I am pretty surprised that we got pretty small numbers for a lot of these tests. So the speed and things like that were not really very different. Um, but then obviously when it came to the amount of work you could do, really the number of holes you could drill uh, on a battery, we ended up with 30%. And that's the kind of thing that the tool makers will advertise. You know, you get 30% better runtime, 40% better runtime. Uh, and it's a really nice demonstration of how uh, you, can, you can use a brushless motor to just improve the tool overall, you know. And it's added up to just be a much more capable tool. So this one can handle a bigger bit and it can handle 30% uh, more work for the same amount of batteries. So um, yeah, this has been a great... <laughs> Great little video for me to make. Uh, I'm so glad I've finally gotten to it. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel, anyone who's out there doing that. Uh, chuck us a like and a cheeky subscribe. And next, we are going to be cracking these open and seeing what makes them tick. So thanks a lot, guys.